let's talk about the main news that I want to kind of dig deep on because I feel like this story is absolutely fascinating in all manner of ways. So if you're not familiar with this story, just to give you a brief synopsis, um, the founder of Rude, a um, very, I wouldn't say influential, but somewhat popular streetwear label, um, I think mostly based from Los Angeles, but the guy probably travels around the world. The founder from of Rude called Ruigi Villasenor is in a bit of trouble because one of the co-owners, co-founders, investors of Rude is now suing him for $10 million plus for essentially embezzlement. What he's alleging is that Ruigi was using um, the funds that was generated from the business and basically using those monies to pay himself an exorbitant salary or to just use those monies from the business to basically fund his lavish lifestyle of private jets, expensive Richard Milley watches, Lamborghinis, Porsches, Ferraris, um, expensive designer bags, all this crazy stuff that he was buying that, you know, essentially um, was maybe coming out of the flipping bank account of the company. And the other thing I think is also kind of bad about this story is that the other co-founder is alleging that he was always owed 20% of whatever, sales, earnings, whatever it may be called. And Rurigi was not giving him the 20%. And he was also doing a lot of hand-to-hand one-on-one -on -one private deals um whatever it may be called and he wasn't cutting that guy in in any of those deals either so there's a lot a lot of madness going on there so um the fashion law is the one that kind of broke this story and broke it down in real detail so let's go over this because i feel like this is absolutely crazy of a story so it says as follows um rude founder named in 10 million dollar lawsuit um fraud contract and trademark lawsuit it says as follows internal conflict at rude is spilling over on, oh, oh, what, it doesn't let me zoom. Can I zoom on this? Oh, it doesn't let you zoom. Okay, cool. Let's, let's do, it can't let you zoom. So let's continue. It said internal conflict at Rude is spilling out into the open by way of a striking new lawsuit. According to the complaint that was filed in the California Federal Court on June 12th on, on his own behalf uh, and on behalf of Rude Designs, music agent and fashion entrepreneur George Robertson claims that Rude Creative Director and fellow co-owner Ruigi Villasenor and his personal company RMW Group is on the hook for a breach of contract, breach of fiduciary duty, fraud, conversion and trademark infringement and a minimum of $10 million in damage in connection to his activities at the busy Los Angeles based streetwear label. Um, setting the stage in the newly filed lawsuit as first reported by TFL, Robertson asserts that in 2016, a year after Rube was founded, he and Villasenor, now 32, began collaborating on the creative direction of the brand, which quickly found widespread acclaim um, for its designs that balanced luxury with streetwear elements, including pieces that alluded to the Marlboro logo and its tracksedo and its tracksedo um, pants which combines track pants and styling with the high-end finishes. Robertson claims that the, that the Truxedo pants, which he designed, brought Rude into the mainstream and drove the majority of the sales in 2018, in addition to Rude's basketball sneakers, sunglasses, hats, socks, and shorts. That's the really shocking part about it, because, again, fashion, for whatever reason, streetwear, all this stuff, there's a lot of fucking push, a lot of emphasis placed on the kind of lone wolf on the lone soul genius that kind of is responsible for crafting and creating the brand on their own. But we know, we know, right? We know that most likely to become a really popular and successful fashion designer or anybody of any note, you require the help of a team. It's very rare that you do it all on your own. Even if you did design it, the shit on your own, you kind of need your team to ideate it, to flip it, manufacture it, sampling, production, whatever it may be called. You need a team to kind of put it together. But for the longest time, they were pushing Ruigi as a sole person responsible for all the genius stuff that was coming out of Rude, from the fucking Marlboro shirts to those um, Traxedo pants. All these stuff was kind of felt like it was coming all out of one single mind. But effectively, it was coming out of one of the co-owners, which is kind of crazy. The same co-owner who he essentially bumped. Kind of nuts. It continues. Um, let me actually zoom a little bit here. Let's see if it zooms. Yeah, there we go. Um, building the brand. In connection with his partnership to build out Rude, Robertson says that he invested 50000 in the brand in 2016 on the second year of operation, which is a lot of money back then when it's coming up. So it's fifty grand also that Ruigi didn't have. 
And think about that. Keep that in mind. So, giving rise to his ownership of a 20% stake in rude companies, as documented in a 2018 operating agreement. Meanwhile, Villasenor, who separately exited his role as Bally's creative director last month after a relatively brief tenure, owns the remaining 80% and the two parties shared managerial authority of the brand, according to Robertson. Which I didn't know. It's actually quite commendable that he's been able to survive this long with that brand rude because I felt like it kind of, you know, had kind of seen better days. But somehow he retained majority ownership, Ruigi, um, didn't really require, ma you know, major investment and kept that ship chugging along to the point where he got appointed, um, you know, uh, as the creative director at fucking uh, Bali for a brief stint. But all of that came from the work that he did at Flipping Rude. Um, but then also think about it. Why did he get why did he get let go from Bali? Or why did he leave Bali? There might be something in this as well. It continues. Fast forward to 2019 and the party relationship began to sour. Villasenor sought greater control and hoped to diminish Robertson's role and eliminate his creative input. Robertson claims alleging that Villasenor improperly attempted to dilute interest and take steps to freeze him out of rude companies. This culminated in Villasenor eliminating Robertson's access to company files and expressing his attention to dilute Robertson's investment in rude back in 2021. So he blocked him out of the fucking servers. He locked, he changed the password on the Google Drives. He went full fucking crazy mode, locked him out of the Slack, took him out of the fucking group chat and basically let him know, hey, this is my company now. Absolutely crazy. And the really sad thing about it, if you Google their names, you can see many pictures of them together. Like they were close at one point. Clearly, he played a big role in the founding of, Ru of Rude. I guess if you're really... If you had your ears to the ground, you would have known. But I kind of known of Rude um, from afar. Um, I spoke to Rurigi once many, many, many years ago when I went to get him involved at the um, Virgil Abloh Streetway course I helped to flip him, put together. Um, he wasn't really, you know, open to doing it at the time. I think he kind of felt he was above it, which is hilarious. Um, but he kind of was maybe at the time, who knows? But um, I didn't really know that there was a co-founder. I ultimately did think it was just him that did rude on his own similar to like you know jay lorenzo at fear of god he kind of sat around one day and thought oh i want to make my own type of saint laurent you know rick owens type of clothes let me do it myself and kind of just started making clothes that's why i kind of assumed there's a picture here as well with him with lucas sabat as well back in the day also so that's a sad thing like they were actually calling close so it's not like he's bumping or scamming a new investor that's trying to take control of his brand this is somebody that basically got it from the mud with him you know what i mean that's a sad thing about it because if this was like an investor that came along now during the good times and wants to take too much control fair enough but this is a guy that got it from the mud with him and he's fucking doing him dirty like this is not the greatest to be fair it continues um in the meantime, Robertson says that Villasenor has engaged in a scheme to illicitly divert hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars in revenue from rude companies into his personal limited liability company. So at least he's smart. At least he's not taking the money from the company and putting it on his own bank account. He's taking that money and putting it into his own LLC. <laughs> Honestly, the scamming is crazy, man. Call him Ruigi the scammer. Ruigi the fucking scammer. Absolutely mad. Robertson claims, um, noting that as a result, RD's revenue figures on the tax returns do not come close to matching Villasenor's public statements. For instance, Robertson claims that Villasenor publicly stated that Rude's revenue in 2020 was 30 million. Whoa. And in 2021 was over 30 million. RD's tax returns reflect revenue of 10 million in 2020 and 18 million in 2021. That's a big, big, big difference. Holy shit. Yo, I didn't know these guys were making this much money from fucking selling cigarette shirts. So maybe legitimately, if he wasn't actually scamming, he could actually afford the lifestyle he was pushing out on the Instagram. Because I, for the longest time, thought um, Ruigi's Instagram account was too bait. He was doing way too much on Instagram, right? Like private jets, ex luxury cars, expensive fucking wine, caviar, luxury bags, you know, all the bougie hotels and stuff. I thought the Instagram was too much, right? He was kind of flossing too much. But actually, what that kind of article claims is that that company or Rude, the brand, was making a lot of good, a lot of money anyway. So legitimately, they could have fucking, um, he could have actually funded that lifestyle you know, easily if need be. But Jesus Christ, mate, I didn't know that. Okay, let's go back to the article. 
This vast dis discrepancy is partly explained by Villasenor's diversion of Rude's revenue directly into his own pockets to fund his lifestyle, including private jets, Ferraris and Lamborghinis, and a home in the Hollywood Hills, extended stays in Italian villas, and a watch collection that includes several watches worth 100000 Yeah, he's got Richard Millies, right? This is some guy actually posted on Twitter. Big up this guy, um, Jalen. He says, shout out to Rugi for spending them people's money the right way. Just look at the amount of caviar in a damn bowl. The vintage wine is easily 2000 a bottle. Um, look at this. R Richard Millie. Like, imagine being a brand owner of a streetwear brand and fucking be able to afford Richard Millie watches like some rapper or some shit. Caviar on trips and stuff. Like, what the fucking fuck? Like, and this is the, the thing. This is similar to like when, if you have a friend, look, he's, he's lying down in a private jet with a massive fucking Birkin bag and a bottle of Ace of Spades in his hand. The funny thing about this is like, um, this is similar to like when you give, give a friend some money and they owe you money, but then you're seeing them out and about on Instagram stories or they come out with you and start spending loads of money at the bar, but they don't want to pay you back. This is essentially what that guy is facing, right? That Robertson dude. Imagine being the other guy that owns the 20%. You're already getting him trying to ice you out of the company. He owes you loads of fucking money. But then you're seeing him flying all over the world, staying in these expensive places, buying all this expensive wine, private jets, Birkins, Ace of Spades, cigars, caviar. I would be mad, man. I would be furious. I would be furious. Absolutely furious. So anyway, it continues. At the same time, Robertson asserts that Villasenor has abused um, his position of power by causing RD to spend lavishly and irresponsibly on advertising. For example, Robertson states that, oh, sorry, he was claiming that that shit is advertising. Holy shit, Rurigi is a savage. You know what? To be fair to the guy, to be fair, that is kind of true. Because Rude's image is all based on that kind of like Hollywood Hills, Italian villas you know retro you know cars rolls royces old bmws mercedes benzes and shit g wagons like it's kind of based on that kind of idea it's a very strange area or niche of streetwear but it's like this kind of like rich lavish because i feel like the person that kind of spearheaded that kind of scene of like streetwear is i feel like nick terche from diamond 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 and co supply he was the first type of streetwear dude I remember with a brand that would go out and buy a Ferrari, right? Him and like him and Ben Baller, right? They'd be wearing like big chains, driving Ferraris and stuff, living in mansions. Like that was the first time I saw it. For the most part, you know, everybody else that I remember growing up idolizing in streetwear kind of kept their shit humble. Obviously, with the exception of Nigo. Nigo went fucking crazy back in the day. So did Pharrell. But for the most part, everyone kind of kept it humble, didn't really show off their house, acted like they weren't really rich when they were. But these guys are going nuts, bro. They they went crazy, and now it's basically biting them in the ass. Um, and but to, but to call it advertising is kind of true. I kind of see where he's coming from because this is basically advertising in a weird way. It is kind of you know adding to the law of the brand because if you buy Rude, you basically want to have yourself aligned to what they're doing here, right? It's kind of similar to like um we have a similar brand. What's a brand called like Cole Buxton and Represent? Those dudes from the UK, they also kind of live a similar sort of lifestyle. They're driving Porsches. They're going on lavish holidays and shit. Um, when you buy those brands, you're kind of buying the brand to kind of signal that you also want to live that lifestyle. So it's a little bit weird. But anyway, we move. Going back to this article. At the same time, Robertson asserts that Villasenor had a beauty position of power um, and obviously called it advertising. For example, Robertson states that in 2020, when RD's tax returns reflected revenue of 10 million, they reflected advertising expenditure <laughs> of 2.7 million. That is to say, Villasenor caused RD to spend roughly 27% of his revenue on advertising, which meant Richard Millie's, which meant Birkins. Wow. Um, in 2021, when Aldi's tax returns reflected an income of 18 million, they reflected advertising expenditures of 5.4 million, i.e., 30% of the revenue. While rude companies do spend to advertise the brand, Roberts alleged that these advertising expenses are bloated to make up Villasenor's practice of charging his personal expenses to RD. For a point of reference, Robertson states that in the fashion industry, advertising spend is typically 5%. <laughs> and this guy was hitting it with 27 and 30. But the 27 and 30, he was hitting it out of advertising was this. That was advertising. This. 
That's his advertising. A fucking massive family size, you know, Olsen size fucking Birkin. Absolutely crazy guy, man. It continues. To make matters worse, Robertson alleges or argues that Villasenor even began infringing upon and diluting the Rude Company's trademarks, including by personally entering into collaborations such as the one with Zara. Oh, wow. That's true. If you go on his Instagram account, that is true. I never actually figured it out. The Zara collaboration is like him. It's not through Rude. Oh, my God. <laughs> Rude is a fucking top-level scammer. So the scam, the collab he's doing with Zara isn't even done through Rude. It's done actually through his own name. So technically, he just pockets all that money and doesn't give that guy the 20%. <laughs> so he double dips and he pays himself a crazy salary at the company. He charges expenses, his own expenses to the company. He, he, he buys watches and claims it as advertising. And then he gets a fee from Zara to co consult, collaborate, make a capsule collection and he takes that whole entire fee and he takes it to himself <laughs> all these chips mine absolutely wild guy Rurigi, you are wild bro oh my god what did they what did that guy do to him that he wouldn't want to give him because that's what i don't understand the, the brand gets founded in 2005 2015 um, it's going well after the first year. It's already got a bit of steam behind it. Some guy comes along, similar age, similar scene, who has 50 grand to spare and invest it into your brand to basically allow you to kind of go to the next level. That then allows you to have like a 10 plus year run of basically working for yourself, being able to then go and get a job at fucking Bali, working for a luxury fashion house and shit. Amazing. All your dreams come true. What did he do to you to not deserve getting the money that he's owed to him? Like, what happened, man? That guy was there at the beginning, in the mud, on the ground level. And then he just fucking scammed him, like, all the way through. Fuck. Um, anyway, it continues. Um, so, yeah, let's go back to the article. To make matters worse, Robinson argues um, that Villasenor even began infringing upon and diluting Root's company's trademarks, including by personally entering into collaboration, such as one with Zara, in connection in which he designed clothes em emblazoned with the letters RHU. Not only was RHU branding originally developed by RD for Rude Brand, but Villasenor is also improperly personally capitalized on the RHU trademark and goodwill, which is registered and owned by Rude Companies by way of Zara Ruigi collaboration. <laughs> These use of Ruigi Companies' own trademarks as part of a larger unlawful scheme by Villasenor to misappropriate and dilute the marks for his own personal benefit, Rude a Robertson content. And obviously that's some of the collection that he designed there for Zara. Oh my God. Yeah, and exactly. It's a Ruigi and Zara. It's not a Rude and Zara. Bloody hell, this guy, man. Finally, when Villasenor misconduct, including his alleged misappropriation of company funds and other assets, including Rude trademarks for his own personal benefit, became apparent early this year, Robertson claims that Villasenor that he sent Villasenor and Rude Companies a demand letter seeking, among other things, the company's financial statements. Oh, so he asked them to open the books. The books, records and tax filings given that Robertson's lost access to the company files back in 2021, despite maintaining his ownership stake in the brand. Robertson states that he received RD's tax returns, balance sheets and statements of profits and losses for 27 to, from 2017 to through 2021. I bet you Ruigi just sent it over in some like handwritten tax returns, <laughs> printouts, like some random documents. But at the time of the filing this lawsuit, Villasenor still has not proceeded, produced, sorry, all the requested information, including the books of the account and Rude Company's businesses, RD's financials for 2022, any information related to Rude Holdings or any information related to Rude Revenue that was improperly diverted from Rude Companies to RMW or Villasenor. Um, because of Villasenor's repeated breaches and misappropriation and misconduct, and in light of the failed attempts to resolve this matter out of court, Villasenor allegedly offered to pay Robertson $5 million for his share back in 2021. <laughs> No, don't have that. I wouldn't take that. He's already scammed you for like eight plus years. He's double dipping in the company. He's charging. He's using the company car to buy himself fucking watches. Then he gets into collaboration with Zara. 
he he does it under his own name, not under rude, or doesn't even cut you a little, you know, a little piece, breaks you off a little bread, just as like a thank you. Even if he does it on his own, fair, but just a little bread, just as like a mark of respect because he, you got to where you got because of that guy. And then he wants to offer you five million for your share. Nah, nah, nah. The funny thing is, that five million is probably the five million he took from the company. <laughs> <laughs> oh, absolutely crazy. Um, the negotiations faltered. Robertson says that he was left with little to no choice but to file the lawsuit on behalf of himself and rude companies. Um, he, in furtherance of his suit, Robertson accuses Villa Senor of violating the Californian Corporations Code, which gives company members and managers the right to inspect company books and records and tax returns by failing to produce the requested documents. This sounds a lot like what happened with the Joe Budden podcast, Rory or more. Joe Budden's really lucky that Rory and Moore didn't try and sue him and really try to open up the books because I think they would have revealed some dodgy stuff as well because you know Joe Budden loves a strip club I wouldn't surprise me if Joe Budden fucking you know uh files his, his strip club fucking escapades as a company expense and stuff and puts that down as advertising <laughs> you know what I mean so Joe Budden better thank his lucky stars that Rory and Moore didn't do what this guy is doing to fucking Ruigi Fucking hell. Robertson also accuses Villa Senor of breach of contract as the rude company's operations agreement that they are parties to similarly include a duty of produce to rude company's books and records of tax returns upon request. Beyond that, he claims that Villa Senor further breached his contract by failing to observe the payment terms in the party's agreements. For instance, while Ardi's income nearly doubled between 2020 to 2021, Robertson's share of the partnership income actually decreased. Ah, oh, come on, Ruigi, man. If you're going to steal, steal from your half. You don't have to take it from the, your partner's half as well. That is horrible. That is horrible. Double dip, taking way more of the cut from the fucking revenue or the sales and then also taking a cut out of that, that guy's cut. Like, come on, man. So, Robertson's share of the partnership actually decreased from 322000 to 269000 <laughs> At one point, Robertson says that Villasenor publicly touted that the company's annual revenues were greater than $30 million. Mama mia. And yet it made distribution, distributions to him um, that of just 41... No, hold on, what? At one point, Robertson says that Villasenor publicly touted that the company's annual revenues were greater than 30 million, and yet it made distributions to him of just 41,000 per year. No way. Oh my God. Oh my God. The company's generating 30 million <laughs> in a year in revenue. And you're only getting paid 41 grand a year. <laughs> Holy shit. This guy is a scammer of epic proportions. You know what this also proves, by the way? I guess the stream chat would know this, guys, right? You guys would know. This also proves that when you scam, you scam. I think it's like similar to like abusers and stuff, right? There's no such abuser that just does it like once or twice. You do it in all different ways. And I think it's the same with scamming. If you're scamming from somebody, you're not just going to scam like, I'm going to take a little bit of the top. You're going to take a little bit of the top, a little bit from there, a little bit from there, a little bit from there. So usually when you find out someone's scamming, there's usually a whole trail of fucking scams that they've been running for a long, long time. So in my opinion, it wouldn't surprise me. It wouldn't surprise me if maybe, allegedly, maybe, the reason why Ruigi Villasenor got let go from Bali after just like one season might be, or maybe I think it was two seasons collection. I don't know what you're on there. I think maybe two or one, but it was a very short time, maybe basically a year. It wouldn't surprise me if he got let go from Bali because he tried to do the same scam over there. Maybe he tried to use a company card at Bali to basically to try and buy a fucking Porsche or something. And they were like, hey, 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 not here, not here, not here. And they got him the fuck out of here. Maybe. Or maybe Bally had um, knowledge of this fucking lawsuit and they didn't want any of the bad press and they let go of him quickly because they knew it was going to come to light. Maybe. But I've got a feeling if this guy's been scamming for this long 
and he's got history of scamming. Uh, if you check the Twitter, people have been you know, sharing stories of his come up and stuff. And allegedly, he's been finessing his whole way through and he kind of made it and shit. He's been doing a whole fake it to you, make it shit and whatnot. If that's the case, then it wouldn't be far off to expect him to be the kind of guy that went and fucking scammed Bally. Like, imagine getting a job <laughs> at Luxury Fashion House, right? Amazing, right? One of the first Filipino people to do it from streetwear, humble beginnings, no formal training, amazing story, you're super young. And instead of just focusing on the work and creating a legacy through that work and being an inspiration through that work, you're thinking of scams to run. <laughs> Oh my god, this guy's a fucking psycho. Anyway, it continues. Just imagine, imagine you you own 20% of a company and you're getting 41 grand per year. For, you earn 20% of a company that has revenue of 30 million, yet you're getting 41,000 per year. Honestly, I could catch a murder charge for shit like that. I could legitimately catch a murder charge for shit like that. I swear to god. I've had times where I've been working in place, especially startups, where one startup I worked at specifically, we didn't get paid for like three months, right? And, and then we were meant to get paid at Christmas and we didn't get paid at Christmas. And then the company went bankrupt in December. So we were owed three months of, of, of pay. We were meant to get paid it on December as a kind of like thank you and a present for Christmas, which is not really a present, it's what we fucking owed. We don't get paid in Christmas. So it's now four months and then the company goes bankrupt. I legitimately did some really embarrassing and shameful things to get my money at the time. And we did eventually get it a year later, but I did some crazy shit. I'm not going to say what I did, but I did some fucking crazy shit. And it wasn't that much money, right? I wasn't fucking making what these guys were making, but I did some crazy shit to get my money. So I can't imagine what I would do if I helped a guy start a brand I invested 50,000 of my own money a year after he founded it, designed one of the most popular items for that brand, and then didn't see a lick of money that I was owed for the best part of 10 plus years. Whew. I don't know what I'll do. 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 <laughs> no, I don't, I don't know, honestly. No, I can't, I can't say Natashki. I can't say. I can't say. The statute of limitations is not up on that one. I can't say, <laughs> but I did some stuff. <laughs> Trust me. <laughs> Yo, anyway, let's continue. Um, not done. Robertson sets out his claims. One breach of fiduciary duty. Uh, alleging, da -da -da, sorry, that Villasenor knowingly acted against the interests of the rude companies. And Robertson, by diverting company resources and opportunities of himself and connection of various collaborations, and by diverting rude companies' income to himself instead of the company. Two, conversion. Villasenor and RMW's conversion also constitutes fraud, embezzlement, and misappropriation. Those are big, big, big accusations. Fraud, embezzlement, and misappropriation of funds. Yeah, that's like the that's like the fucking trifecta of scamming. <laughs> Big up, Ruigi. Um, and three violations of Section Four Nine Six of California Penal Code for substantially interfering with Robertson's property by knowingly or intentionally taking possession of and preventing Robertson from access to share the company's available cash. Lastly, Robertson sets out a handful of trademark claims in his lawsuit, um, including trademark infringement and dilution, and arguing that Villasenor has made use of Rude's trademarks without authorization from Rude's companies. In terms of dilution, Robertson claims that by way of collaborations of Zara, for example, Ruigi Villasenor is making business use in commerce of trademarks that dilutes and is likely to dilute the defectiveness of Rude's companies. Uh, by eroding the public's exclusive identification, sorry, of Rude with the Rude companies, tarnishing and degrading the positive association and prestigious connotations of this mark and otherwise lessening the capacity of Rude companies. As a side note, despite the allegedly sizable amount of advertising by Rude, media attention to the brand and the wide array of famous folks from Jay-Z to Justin Bieber. Yeah, allegedly Jay-Z is meant to be an investor. I think he's part of Rock Nation. 
he's always hanging around with them and he has that fucking dorky um paper plane hat sometimes so i don't know what's happening there wearing his design rude and his marks do not seem to me to rise to a record level of fame successfully wage a dilution claim with the for with the foregoing in mind robertson is seeking damages in the amount of to be determined at a trial but in any event a minimum of 10 million as well as restitution or disorgument of the extent of Billison Yor and RMW's unjust enrichment of other ill gotten gains and among other things. Yo, 10 million minimum he's, he's fucking fighting for. And I think he's going to get it. I think he's going to get it, man. Rurigi does was doing too much on the, was on the gram, was doing way too much on fucking social media, as we've already seen in terms of living a lavish lifestyle. And just regardless of all this lavish lifestyle stuff, I think on paper, it sounds like he was really fucking the guy over. And the thing that I'm saying that's really sad about this is that at the beginning of the story, it already tells you that this guy invested 50,000 of his own money in 2016 to help launch the brand or to help kind of propel the brand forward. A year after it was founded. It's founded in 2015. He invested in 2016. So he's, he was there a year after it's a founding and took it to the next level with him. So much so that they were hanging around each other. They were clearly friends, had good vibes, and he couldn't do right by him. So, you know, I think on paper, it looks like he's going to get the money and maybe and some. Maybe they might settle out of court. I'm not really too sure. But there's also a possibility. I'm, I don't know if this might be true, but it feels like there might be a possibility where they might even take the brand off him. If he doesn't have the money to pay for the, for the you know, whatever he's owed, like imagine, yeah, I could, could that happen? Maybe that could happen. Where they take ownership of the brand to kind of give him back the money that he's kind of owed. That might be a thing. But one of the weird things is, Rubigi is really not really pressed. He posted recently on his Instagram, this post, which is fucking hilarious with this weird caption. Um, because everyone's talking about it. He posted a post of his um, flyer for his presentation for Rude out there in Paris Fashion Week for men's. And the caption says, come to my show if you've got something to say. <laughs> this is a bit lame. And in my opinion, this is not tough. Like you can't try acting like a tough guy, like some mob mafioso dude. Because in my opinion, there's nothing more pussy than scamming. There's nothing more pussy, especially than scamming your friends. Like you're not doing it to his face. You're doing it, you know, behind his back. You're doing it in a sneaky way. You're trying to act fucking clever and do all these fucking scams and run all these fucking games. And, you know, and then you're trying to then act tough by saying the things that he's saying on Instagram, by saying, come and say hi. Now, he could be speaking to the guy or he could be speaking to people like me, just commentators online, which is weird too, because this, is, this isn't this is our business. This doesn't directly affect us. Why would we want to press you about this issue? It's lame as fuck, it's not going to help you with how you're perceived and looked at in the industry, it's going to make people, you know, avoid you with a 10-foot barge pole, because essentially you are flipping Ruigi the scammer, but it's not something that we need to cuck in bare arms of, and start, you know, walking around in front of the shop with placards, trying to cause a ruckus, if actually, that would be actually a good way to kind of troll and get some attention right and shit posts to stand out front of his outside of his showroom um or whatever the place that he's doing his collection um and then just with placards you know what i mean with uh, <laughs> Regan the scammer um fucking you know um signs up and stuff that'd actually be a good little flipping you know prank to kind of run but no one's kind of caring that way but i just don't like this whole like you know tough guy talk stuff because like i said i think there's nothing more pussy than scamming somebody. Um, you're not doing it to their face. You're doing it behind closed. You're doing, you know, away from prying eyes. Um, and especially in this case, you're doing it to somebody who legitimately helped you out in the beginning when you didn't have the funds to kind of take your brand to the next level. Um, and according to the fucking um, article, he was actually responsible for one of the most popular items that fucking Rude actually did. That horrible truck Sado fucking pant that I think is absolutely horrendous personally for me. I never really liked them. If anything, I think they were a copy on some Saint Laurent pant that Hades Slimane might have designed back in the day because no fear of God had a particular pant as well that was a similar type of style. There was a period of time, maybe around 2018, when everyone was fucking wearing these pants. I fucking hated them personally. Uh, but yeah, there's even a picture here of ASAP Rocky with a pair, right? For some reason, I don't know why these were so popular, but I absolutely hated these, how they looked. Um, guys in LA absolutely swore by these fucking pants wearing them with vans and jordans and fucking shit um but they absolutely look horrible to me if anything they kind of look like you know upmarket pajamas um you know in a weird way or kind of they kind of make they kind of remind me a little bit of like nike tech pants ones that people wear to play football in and shit 
but kind of made like as a designer way. But yeah, they were really popular. So that guy designed these pants that were really popular, that kind of took, you know, Rue to the next level. Um, and then, of course, they were also known for that, what's that, that cigarette shirt, right? Um, I don't know who designed that. I don't think he's taking credit for that one. But this cigarette shirt was also one of the fucking ones that everybody was wearing for a period of time. The LA guys love this too, this cigarette shirt. Oh, yeah, oh, look, see? Look at it. Look at all the celebrities wearing that. That, 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 that fucking Marlboro light spin shirt. I don't know why this is so popular. I really don't know why it, it captured people's imagination. But this fucking shit has been faked and copied so much. That's a sign of real success. It's absolutely crazy how fucking successful this fucking shitty shirt was. But yeah, um, they made a bunch of money, did really well. And then he fucking scammed his friends. So most, more than likely, I'm expecting that the case will probably land in the favor of the guy that's, you know, suing him. Um, it's looking likely because, you know, Ruigi was just doing way too much when it comes to the scamming and shit. Look, he's got articles written about him in the fucking Los Angeles Times. It's absolutely nuts. And like I said, his Instagram was just too much when it comes to the stuff that he was kind of, you know, um, showcasing on there. But if you actually check the guy's Instagram also, who's suing him, you can see he's also plugged into the scene. You know, the stuff that he's got, he's got his own brand that he does also, which is called this, what's it called? Uh, I've got it here. I've not, yeah, it's called Think Different. You can also, there, we've got stuff that he does on there. Um, but yeah, the guy that's selected with him is definitely plugged in. Got all the usual stuff you expect from somebody that is a co-owner and co-founder of fucking Rude. So eager to see how this plays out. He's got a picture here with Andre 3000. He's got some good ricks there that he got resold that look really cool. Yeah, so clearly somebody that you would assume would be a part of that sort of brand. So yeah, he's he's, he's going to come into a real good payday um, very, very soon. So big up to him. Hopefully that kind of works out for him. But what an absolutely crazy story, man. Again, it's proof, proof that not all that glitters is fucking gold, man. Sometimes you sit there thinking that these people are doing something right. They've smashed it. They've achieved it. You may be a bit envious, a bit jealous. You want to be them. But actually what they're doing is fucking scamming and swindling their friends who they've kind of co-owned or started the brand with. That's actually why it's allowing them to have the lifestyle that they're living. In your head, you're thinking it's fucking, you know, all through the hard work that they're doing and the designs that they're making. But actually behind the scenes, they're doing some crazy shit. And like I said, it's no coincidence that he got fired or let go from Bali when he did get fired from Bali. Most likely he got fired from Bali because of the scams he was running and the stuff that he was doing. So either they knew about it and it was coming up and something that they want, they wanted to avoid all the bad PR, or there is a possibility that he was also trying to run that scam, you know, um, there at Bali as well, which is absolutely crazy, but it does make a lot of sense because when you scam once, you're going to scam all the time. So it makes a lot of sense in that regard. So anyway, um, let's see how it plays out. Eager to see what happens development wise and whatnot. But that is the story of Ruigi flipping scamming, 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 scamming.